So a couple of days ago, I was talking to one of my friends. I'm going to blur the name out here as usual. So I say, hey, what's up, blank? And they say, hey, Toby, what's up? What's going on? I just got out of class, and I'm hoping this person is free. Hopefully his schedule's cleared up so we can go to the gym together. So I'm just going to find out how he's doing. And then once I find out he's free, here I am going, and I'm going to ask, hey, uh, you down to go to the gym? And um, it takes a while for him to respond. I speed up the time here a little bit for the video, but it takes him a lot longer to say this, the gym. Huh? And I'm very confused as to what he's asking about. Why is he, is there another? Ah, and then he tells me he can't go. And of course, I'm not upset, just curious. Why can't you go exactly if he's free? This is a Wednesday afternoon, and I know for a fact his schedule is pretty clear on Wednesdays. At least, that's what I thought. Here, I'm just really interested in what he's about to say. And if, again, I'm fine if he doesn't want to go. I'm just really, really interested in what he's about to tell me because he's been texting for a while. And after a while, he sends this block of text here. He has band practice? This catches me completely by surprise because I've hung out with him almost every day and I've never heard of him ever mentioning band practice. So, uh... I tell him that I didn't know he was in the band. And of course I'm happy for him. I'm like, wait, that's actually kind of cool. And he plays the drums too. But of course there's that little voice in my head saying that he's probably just finessing his way out of coming to the gym. So I ask him about the band and he tells me after, you know, waiting for a while, he's been Oh, he just started. Oh, okay, that makes sense. But he's been practicing, apparently, and yeah, that's all cool. So, and then here we're just talking about his time playing bass. But now, I'm still kind of interested in the fact that he's, if he's really in a band right now. So I just ask him, like, hey, is your band performing anytime soon? What I don't expect when I send this is just straight out ask me why. This catches me so off guard because don't you want a friend to come see you and support you in your performances? Unless, of course, you're lying. At this point, I'm already just thinking like, man, he doesn't want to come with me. So there's no point in both of us continuing to just go around in this circle. Because I'm pretty sure at this point he is not part of a band, but... I still want to find out if he does, I'd love to support. So he tells me, yeah, probably. There will probably be some performances later on in the year. You know, the band is getting everything together like, you know, most bands do. Just got to figure out when the performances are during the year. So I just tell him, all right, I'm just going to head out and... Yeah, this is pretty much the end of the conversation here. There's nothing else really to say. And then this got me thinking, I'm pretty sure he's lying, but I have no concrete way of proving it. I tried taking this to YouTube and seeing if there was some way I could figure out how to spot lies or figure out if someone's lying in general. And most of these things are based off of visual cues, but something like body language you can't get from text. So does that mean this ends here? No, there must be some way you can get from a text message, certain clues or some kind of hint that someone's not telling the complete truth. So when I tried typing that in, I found this video. Types of SMS text messages that show someone is lying. I took the liberty of watching the whole 10 minute video and it got me thinking, what if we could write a computer program that could tell us given a bunch of text messages, whether or not it's possible someone's lying and show us the most likely lies in it. Try to analyze their texting behavior if you suspect they are lying. And that's what our program will do. Take in all their text messages and tell us the most suspicious parts. Number 11, delay, delay, delay. If it takes someone 40 minutes to respond and their excuse is I'm watching television, there's a chance they are lying. If we're gonna try to spot any suspicious delays between messages, the best thing to do first is to get the average response time between all the messages that are sent between us in this conversation. So here, this is what this function is doing. We're adding up the total time in seconds and dividing it by how many different messages there are, or lend times for short. 
With that done, we can make a function called suspicious delay, where after we get that average delay, we'll go through all of our times and we'll see which ones are outliers. For this test run, I chose delays that are two seconds longer than the average, but that might change later. And that last line, live values, that'll be used later. They will also play a cat and mouse game and try to act like they don't know what you're talking about or just hide from the situation altogether. So you can interpret this clue a bunch of different ways, but how I took it for the sake of this program is if someone's asking you a bunch of questions, then it's possible they're trying to redirect the conversation or somehow make you forget that they're lying. So I'm gonna go through each message and take note of every time I see a question mark. Number eight, the long sentence text. A study conducted by Cornell University proved that liars will often have longer text messages. So this is such a good clue that I'm not gonna go verify whether or not that study was actually done. Just like we did with the delays between messages, we're gonna first get the average length of each message and then find the ones that are a little longer than the rest. So the number I used this time was 10. 10 here means 10 more characters than the average length. Four, awkward wording. According to recent research, the most common words used by women that were lying were probably try and I. Again, I have no idea what this research is and if it's legitimate or not, but it's easy enough to go through all the messages and search to see if the person's using any one of these three words. The person's not a woman, but it shouldn't matter, honestly. If you're still watching up to this point in the video, thank you a ton. Don't forget to like the video because it helps my channel a lot. And subscribe if you like this type of stuff. And here we're looking at the entire program as well as proof that we're actually gonna write something that works and is going to run. And now let's talk about the live values, that thing that you've been seeing in every single function I've shown. It starts off as a list of zero, where every zero corresponds to a live value score for each message. And as we go through all of our checks to see what messages are lies, the scores for each message can go up. Everything's almost ready here. We're doing four checks, checking the number of questions asked, how long messages are, the delays between messages, and the suspicious words. In this function, generate live values, we're gonna perform all those checks, and we're gonna update our live values, basically telling us which of the messages are more likely to be lies. Once we get a lie score for each message, we can take it a step further by writing this function, get most likely lies, that gives us the top three most likely lies of all the messages in the conversation. And I'm showing you the recording of me actually coding this in real time, just to show you that I don't think of things perfectly the first time and I make a bunch of mistakes on the way. So this is probably a good time, if not too late, to say, quick disclaimer, this is not real. Please don't think that you can use a program to tell for sure if someone's lying, especially through text. Like, come on, man. And there's much better and more advanced computer programs that actually analyze your emotion and your intentions through words using a bunch of complicated stuff that's not going to be on a Toby the Great video. But just to know, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you could probably find it somewhere. We're almost done here. We have all of our messages printed out and we have our scores and we have our most likely lies, but it doesn't look that pretty. So I'm gonna take a few seconds here to add some additional formatting just to make the message more clearer when we see it in the output. And we see the final result here. For all the messages that were sent to us in this conversation, we have the lie score. So for some, Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but for the most part, the truthful statements had lower lie scores. And we have an obvious winner here with a lie score of five was the first message about band practice being in the next hour and about his drumsticks. So that's another program and another video done. I had a lot of fun doing this and thank you for watching this video. I'm going to post this code on GitHub if anyone's interested. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'm on my way to go confront my friend about this lie. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Your feelings change like the weather uh, on that cloudy day. Skies just went, eh, uh, uh, uh.